Welcome back to the placement system series. In this video, I'll be showing you exactly how to secure your system on the server, as well as fixing one minor issue. Starting off with fixing one minor issue, just to get it out of the way. Um, essentially, if you were to hit play, and once your placement system loads in, you'll notice that the player actually interacts with physics with the uh, crate. And as you can see, it also doesn't let you place down the object because it turns red. And that means that we are detecting collisions. And we don't want that. We want the player to be out of the question. We don't want to have the player, because sometimes if you have like a big bounding box or whatever, for like the collision, if you have like a tree or something and it's not taking up like this crate, I mean, yeah, you could say, okay, for this crate, maybe you don't want the player to be, uh, or maybe you do want to include collisions. But and even then, I still don't understand why you would, because it would make it a lot harder anyway. But if you have something with like a big collision box or whatever, then it's going to make it a lot harder if you just happen to have like one little, like one limb just in there. And it's not going to be very um, easy to place on the object. So we want to fix that. So how do we do that? Well, in placement handler and server placement, we need to do one thing. And well, in client or replacement handler, we're actually going to do two things, but in, it's, yeah, that's minor. Um, but the first thing that we're going to do is just say that and not, and then collision points of i, and then is descendants of, or in, is descendant of. And as you know, we have a character variable, so we can just input the character. And that should fix that. And to do it on the server as well we have to do, do the exact same thing here. So we can just say, uh, or no, not that. What am I doing? And not uh, collision points of i is descendant of. Now, what do we put here? Well, I'm gonna put char. Now, as you know, we don't have that parameter, but we can declare it up there. Now, how do we actually get the character when we only have access to the player? Well, let's actually hit play and I'll show you. Okay, so if we go here and we click on the player, you will see that there is a parameter called the character. And so we can actually use that in our game, or not our game, in our placement system. And so how we access this, we just say plr dot character, and that should work there. We hit play. As you can see, it is still interacting with physics. However, we are not actually detecting collisions. We can still place down the object and it works just fine, as you can see. As you can see, there is still a big issue to fix, but we fixed the first part of it. Okay, so the second part is just making collisions off, like in the physics realm of Roblox Studio, not in the placement system world. So. Uh, to do that, when we activate placement, we just want to turn or go through all the objects in that uh, model and turn all of the mesh parts, unions, and regular parts can collide property to false. Now you may be saying, wait a minute, doesn't that mean that our collisions will turn off like completely? We'll not be able to detect uh, collisions? And no, that is not the case because there's actually two parameters that you can turn on and off. Uh, for collisions, so can collide and can touch. And the difference between these two is can collide is the more physics-based thing. So it will, it doesn't affect any events or anything like that. All it is is it says can this interact with physics. So if there is an object like right here, or in, interact with collision physics, I guess. If there's a part right here, will this object? If this part has can collide and this part has can collide, will this object either stack on top of it or will it just ignore the part and just go down to the same Y level as it? And so that's a very, you know, broad kind of explanation. Um, basically, does it interact with physics? That's the main thing. And can touch, all that does, if you turn that off, that's just going to make it so that the touched event will not fire. So that means that our placement system world collisions here will not fire. This event will not fire if we turn can touch on, but can collide has nothing to do with this. 
And you'll notice that if we turn can collide off, we also have can query. Now, I think that has to do with um, region three, which is not something we're gonna be worrying about here. So you can either leave that on or off if you have can collide off. So now knowing that, we can actually go down over here. And as long, it really doesn't matter where we put this, but as long as it's um, before we parent the object. So I'm just gonna do it about right, right over here. Just right, this is good. So I'm gonna say for i v in pairs, and then we can just say that object, and then get descendants do. And then what we can do is we can just say that if v is a, whoops, is a, make sure you're using the correct capitalization, part or v is a mesh part or v is a and then union operation just like that then we can turn v dot can collide to false just like that now you might be saying well why is it union operation that's just what they call it that's the class of unions so yeah mesh part part and union operation for unions so now it should work. As you can see, it does. And as you can see, now we can place right on top of the player. So that was the first issue. Uh, and the next thing that we're gonna be doing is actually looking at securing your placement system on the server, or at least more so. We already have the collisions, but we also need to do the bound system. So how do we do that? Well, it's going to be slightly different than the regular bound system, but it should be, if you already know that, it shouldn't be too hard to kind of realize what's happening. And because I've already gone over like why things work, I'm not going to be going over exactly why it works here because it would just take too much time and we've already gone through it. So if you don't understand this, then I highly recommend you watch that video on the bound system where I explain exactly why we're doing all this adding and subtracting and dealing with offsets and stuff like that. So if this looks very foreign to you, make sure you go watch that video because I'm not gonna be going over it here. Yes, the code will look slightly different, but if you know this, it should be fairly simple to pick up. So now realizing that we can, let's just copy and paste this function here. You can just copy and paste. We are gonna be changing quite a bit, but yeah, so. Here we go, we obviously got this plot variable for a reason. Um, also just to put the plot in the, or put the part in the correct location. But we also need it for this bounds system right over here. So now what we can do is we can just, we don't really need to deal with the offsets. So we can actually get rid of that. We can get rid of the offsets, just like this. And okay rid of that one as well. Now obviously then we also can get rid of that and we don't need the C frame values and so we can just get rid of that. And we can also get rid of what's in this return as well as the C frame values right here. So now we're just left with this and we do need to input some parameters and so we do need the plot and the primary part. So we can give it primary. And we can just say local current pause, pause, current pause is equal to, and then primary dot position. There we go. And okay. So this is where things start to happen. All we're going to do is we're just going to return a Boolean expression, essentially, or a Boolean value, true or false. So we're just going to check. It's going to be a little bit of a longer line. So just, you know, just, yeah. So we say that current or return that current pause dot X is greater than upper bound, upper X bound, or current pause dot x is less than lower x bound or 
current pause dot z is greater than upper x bound or current position or current pause dot z is less than lower bound. Oh, and this shouldn't be an x. This should be a z right there. And this is all we have to do. Now, what is this doing? Well, it's basically checking that if we are out of the bounds. So if our position is greater than the upper x bound, then we know for a fact that we are outside of the plot. And so this is basically going to return true if and only if we are outside of the plot. And we are doing that for each axis. You can sort of see what's happening here. So if this is less than the lower, then we are going to return true. And if this is greater than the upper on both axes, obviously, then we're also going to return true. And notice these are not ands, these are ors. So if only one of those expression, or if only one of those statements were true, then it's going to return true for the entire return value. Okay, so now how do we actually use this here? Well, what we can do is this, the same way that we did handle collisions, we can also use the bounds function. Now, I like to rename the function um, just from bounds. So check boundaries. Whoops, that's not how you spell boundaries. Okay, so to do this, like I said, we can use the same way that we did handle collisions. So right, right here, we can just say that if and then not, or no, if, not, not. If this was wrapped around parentheses and we had a not there, then we would do if not. But if this is true, if check boundaries, and then we give it the plot, so plot, and then we give it the primary part, so item dot primary part, then if that is true, because remember, if any of these are true, that means we are out of the bounds in at least one axis. So that is all we're doing there. So if that is true, then we can just return false. And that is obviously what we want to do. So now let's just actually go test that and see if that works. Okay, one thing I did miss actually as I was just testing, and you probably you didn't see that, but um, one thing I did test out is that we need to destroy the object. So item destroy, because if that is true, we've already placed it down, but we need to destroy it as well. So now it should work. Now it should work. All right, so testing for the second time, but for you guys the first time, let's just get our four corners just like this. Last one right over there. And so, yeah, here we go. Current server, here we go. They all look like they're on the correct things there. So now what happens if we go here and just scale the X to 200? What happens? As you can see, it is not allowing us to place. Now, if we place over here, it allows us to. However, over here, it is not. As you can see. So that is that. Now let's talk about more securing. So say you have some sort of currency system or things like that. You're going to want to do all of your checks in here. So you're going to want to check, do they have enough money? You're, one thing that I would do is in the on the on the replicated storage you want to put a value in the primary part or within the, the creator or the model or whatever have a value for the price of it and then also check and then check that from the cloned object not anything the client sends you but from the server so you know it would be something like oh you know object dot and then primary part dot you know value or something or price dot value is less than or equal to the amount that they have, then you do that. And the same thing could be said about any, uh, you know, just sending things from the client, not trusting it. The issue that I fixed last video, which was the grid system with the mouse, if you move it too fast and press with the, and click with the uh, interpolation on, that it could be off grid. Technically, the probably the best way to fix it is actually to do it on the server. However, I didn't want to do that just because I didn't want to have everything done on the server and it doesn't really matter if it goes off the grid it's just it's good to have it in case you know if just some user uses it if someone exploits to do it 
if it's really important to you, you can obviously port it over to here. But for now, it's just easy enough to do where's the function right here and then just send that. But again, really what you should be doing is probably actually doing that here. And it's also part of the reason is handling with the mouse stuff on the server or whatever. It's just not very good. But what you probably could do is instead of worrying about the mouse position, because that wouldn't be something you would actually do, is just run the current position that gets sent to the server through this function on the server, through this function right here. And so that's that. So just make sure that you are doing all your checks in this function. A lot of people that use my place module v3, they don't really know how to do that. But yeah, so next video will either be, will probably just be a wrap up video and fixing any other issues that come with it. But that's a lot. That's basically all I'm going to talk about here. Okay, let's just go over the code like I usually do. So the first thing we did was obviously change the collision system a little bit just to ignore the player. And so we did that over there. Same thing on the server, except we had to create our own character value. Then we also made it so that the collisions do not detect with can collide at least. They don't get detected or not, not get detected. They don't um, happen, I guess you could say. The collision doesn't actually happen. Still detects collisions though. And that happens right here so that when your cursor is right on top of the character, it isn't going to make the character fall over or stuff like that, or at the very least get thrown off the map because it's you know being pushed by the object. And yeah, so we did that right here. As you can see, we did that. And then we did the boundary system. So on the server, obviously. So what this is really saying is it's just the same exact function, except here we're just checking for all the cases, for all the corners, so this would be the top right or the you know, X right, and then the X left, and then the same thing for the other axes. And all we're doing is checking to see if we are outside of that bounds. So if we are, then we're gonna return true, and then if that gets, uh, if that is true down here, we're just gonna destroy the object and return false. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So if you have any questions, make sure you join the Discord server. I am actually back now and yeah, so I'll hopefully be answering questions. And yeah, so yeah, if you have any questions, make sure you join the Discord server and ask in dev support. And yeah, make sure you subscribe, like the video, and I'll see you in the next video. And yeah.